an abstruse tome entitled Acupuncture, Points and Meridians. <laughs> Be brave, Gwen said. Oh, I, I probably should have mentioned if it doesn't become apparent. What I'm about to read that Gwen herself is eight, almost eight and a half months pregnant. Gwen tugged at the hem of the overworked black maternity skirt she had pressed into service for this exercise in ritual humiliation. Her shirt, though crisp and clean, was originally her husband's and Hawaiian. But her hair was looking all right. Clean, springy, baby locks freshly twisted. Her hair was definitely equal to this morning's ordeal. And in that, Gwen found a modicum of comfort, if not, perhaps, dangerously, defiance. She cleared her throat. <clears throat> if I was brave, Aviva, I wouldn't be sitting here. I mean, long-term brave, Aviva said. Big picture brave. You mean the cowardly kind of brave, Gwen said. <laughs> right, Aviva said. <laughs> As opposed to the stupid kind. <laughs> okay. Is that for me? <laughs> this could be. Ayala has been known to track me down in many different ways. I would not put it past her. This distinction, that is between the cowardly kind of brave and the stupid kind, accorded with Gwen's experience and to a lesser extent her beliefs and yet making it did not come for her at all. You swear, she said, seeking this guarantee for the third time that morning. Aviva, you swear to me. It does not mean a thing, Aviva said. Because I have to tell you, it feels so meaningful that I want to kind of vomit. <laughs> You're going to be sick, said the Saturday receptionist, looking over from her monitor to study Gwen, her tone saying, don't you throw up in my office. She had a vibrant head of sister curls, and Gwen recognized her as a fellow disciple of Tynese at Glamma. <laughs> they had crossed paths a few times, pilgrims to the shrine. Something about the woman had always bothered Gwen. Now she knew what it was an invisible, pervasive miasma of Lazar. That's the name of the doctor, Dr. Lazar. You know, I might, Gwen said. She lowered her voice to the peculiarly audible whisper common among the women of her family. Peculiar not in its audibleness, but in the disingenuous way that, like God handing down his commandments to a bunch of folks he knew perfectly well were going to break all of them repeatedly for all time, it bothered to be a whisper at all. A Shanks woman with a practiced embouchure could not only modulate the dynamics of her whisper, but send it through closed doors, around corners, across time itself to echo everlasting. For example, in the reprobate ears of a granddaughter married to a no-account man. <laughs> Having to eat you-know-what will do that to you, Gwen said. Aviva lowered her face to her textbook, not quite in time to conceal a smile. The receptionist, for her part, did not appear to find Gwen amusing. Her long fingernails resumed their furious clacking against the keys of her computer, a sound that had been annoying Gwen, she realized, since they sat down. Gwen shifted in one of the vinyl upholstered steel chairs that furnished the waiting room, tipping herself first onto her left buttock, then onto the right. Whenever she leaned one way or the other, her thighs peeled away from each other with a sigh, like lovers reluctant to part. <laughs> the muscles at the small of her back had gathered themselves into an aggrieved fist. Baby's head was jammed up against the left side of her rib cage, just under her heart, right at the spot where Gwen ordinarily felt premonitions of disaster. 
What I need, she said in the same Shanks whisper, audible to the dermatologist in the office next door, is something to wash it down with. Something, uh, thinking of a cup of the creamy white souf, this Ethiopian drink she's been craving lately, which she would never again permit herself to enjoy. Something to get rid of the taste of shh, Aviva said. She reached down for her handbag, unzipped an inner pocket, and took out a miniature airplane bottle of Tabasco sauce. <laughs> Put a few drops of that on it. Gwen took the bottle and shook it a few times, thinking, squeeze a few drops into Lazar's bathroom soap dispenser. <laughs> Massage the stuff right into his stubby pink head. Work it right on down to the pores. As she pictured herself, oddly satisfied, performing this bit of revenge grooming, <laughs> the door between the waiting room and the examination area swung open, and Dr. A. Paul Lazar, FCOG, came out. <laughs>